Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! They simply fell in love in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now thousands of gay and bisexual men will be given pardons for being convicted of sexual offences under laws long since abolished. Campaigners are demanding a proper apology too, saying they were never guilty of anything and were unjustly prosecuted just for who they are. The move came after the royal pardon for Enigma codebreaker Alan Turing, as Kieran Jenkins now reports. The swinging 60s brought us the Beatles, the Kinks, the Summer of Love. And in 67, finally, it became legal for gay men to have sex. Before then, it was a criminal offence. <laughs> 21 years we've been together. George Montague, now 93, remembers exactly how he was caught. They had a, a way of finding out if you were gay. They would pick up a young boy, a young lad, probably doing something you didn't ought to be doing, and you had met him maybe in, in a gay club that you could get to. Once a month or so, you could travel some distance, a long way, to go to a gay bar or gay club. And if he knew your name, he'd give the name to the police. The police say, otherwise we'll take you back to your parents and tell them what you were doing. I want, come on, give us all. And my name was on the queer list. So what chance did I have? It may seem absurd that George still has a criminal record, but now he and thousands of other gay men, living and dead, will be pardoned. It means the pardon given to codebreaker Alan Turing in 2013 will no longer be an anomaly. It's taken a long time to get here. Did any homosexuals give evidence before you? Yes, they did, quite deliberately and of their own free will. Decriminalisation was proposed after a three-year inquiry way back in 1957. Okay. Incredibly, this is what progress sounded like then. Isn't there a danger that it may have repercussions on children, that these men may also go after children? Well, from the evidence we've had, <clears throat> oddly enough, the opposite is what we should expect. Because on the medical evidence that we've had, it looks as if there are two quite different kinds of homosexual men. Those who prefer the company of their contemporaries and those who prefer uh, young people, boys and it may be girls. Decades have passed. Attitudes have thankfully changed. But 50,000 dead and 15,000 living gay men still have convictions to their name. But a pardon is not what George wants. Because if you accept a pardon, it means you accept that you were guilty. I want nothing short of a plain and simple apology why not say sorry it's only a word it means a lot to people it means a lot to people absolutely and i had someone call my office today because her stepbrother had been convicted under these laws and their shared mother who's now 100 has lived to hear that her son has been pardoned and as i have said it is a matter of extreme regret we may have come a long way but for some who remember being punished for their sexuality, there's still much further to go. Karen Jenkins reporting. Now, there's been widespread fury today after the government defeated a private member's bill which would have pardoned thousands of men alive today who were convicted of being gay years ago before it was decriminalised and the age of consent lowered to 16. MPs shouted shame at the Justice Minister, Sam Jima, as he talked out what had been dubbed the Turing Bill after the World War II codebreaker, Alan Turing, who received a posthumous pardon himself. These offences were captured under offences such as gross indecency at the time, but are still crimes today. It is important that a pardon for the living takes place only after due process has taken place to them. Order! 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 Enough! Well, yesterday, in an attempt to head off today's bill, proposed by the SNP MP John Nicholson, the government said it would grant posthumous pardons to the convicted dead. But this measure was about those still living with the shame of criminal record. The MP John Nicholson, whose bill it was, is with me now. When, when you announced this, it had widespread cross-party support. It did. Now, David Cameron was Prime Minister then. 
What changed under Theresa May? Well, that's a good question. It may be the, the change was the, the Prime Minister. When I was asked to take on this bill, I was called in by the Conservative Party whips. And they said to me, Mr Nicholson, if you take on the Turing bill as your private member's bill, we promise there will be no tricks and no games from our side. And I took them at their word. And so today, of course, I was enormously disappointed to see the, the Justice Minister there talking out the bill, because the bill would have delivered pardons for gay men who are still alive, who've had to live with a sense of injustice for all these years. And it would have pardoned men whose crimes are no longer in the statute book. People will be confused because yesterday the government announced that it was going to pardon posthumously all those men convicted. So what's the difference? Well, I think that was an attempt to hijack my, my bill. It's no surprise in, in some ways, I suppose, but it was terribly disappointing. And they didn't talk to me about that and they didn't tell me that they were going to do that. I'm much more interested. It's great, of course, to pardon men who are dead. Of course it is. But I'm much... And my bill would have done that but I'm much more interested in pardoning the living and giving mostly old gay men a sense of closure. They were claiming that this could lead to paedophiles being pardoned and all, all sorts of things. I mean... B bizarre for them to make that claim and absolutely intellectually incoherent because the opening clause of my bill was this bill pardons gay men for crimes which are no longer on the statute book. Since paedophilia is still on the statute book, by definition, it would not have been included in my bill. So why, why do you think they wanted to stop you, given everybody was signed up to the principle of this? And, in fact, every, almost every Conservative MP who spoke today in the debate, some of them enormously, movingly, supported the bill. Well, all, all I can go on is what I hear. Some of the lobby correspondents were telling me tonight that MPs and a minister had said that they were trying to kill off this bill because it was an SNP bill and they didn't want to see an SNP bill on the statute book. And that's enormously tribal and immature. Because what would it have been the first it would have been. piece of SNP legislation? Yes, because legislation. I'm the, the SNP arrived in the House of Commons in 1945 and I'm the first ever to top the private members' bill draw. I mean, this is very cynical, if that's the case, isn't it? I mean, you, you came in as a... Well, idealistic MP, I guess. Young. Uh, well, ish, uh, last year. And um, we've known each other long enough for me to say that. Uh, I mean, are you feeling sort of disillusioned with politics tonight? I was determined not to be tribal. I was a journalist. I've got friends across the political divide. So I do find it enormously disappointing. And I could see on the faces of the Tory MPs who'd supported the bill a great sense of disappointment. The reason the government talked it out was because they knew that had it gone to a vote, the Tory backbenchers would have voted for it. And they didn't want that to happen. John Nicholson, thanks for coming in.